I guess what I was making is the distinction between on one side um, sound and vision. Yeah. And then on the other side, the remaining three senses. Um, but do you think sound and vision go together naturally? Uh, depends on the context. I was just about to say that um, sound and vision do not re uh, um, require physical closeness. Yeah. Whereas the other ones do, and they are wave phenomena. Yeah. Whereas the other ones are. But then sound requires phenomena. like a certain level of physical closeness, doesn't it? Yeah, well, because you can't hear things that you're really far away from. Yeah, because uh, but then it's just a uh, question of volume, I guess. Oh yeah, right. true. But then on the other hand, there is some physical closeness as well because you're just making sense out of um, sound and vision in your in your mind. They're just yeah. waves, and you are kind of interpreting. Like, yeah. They're just yeah, developing in your ear and your eye. And but I th I was th I think it's quite interesting. So like sound and vision is uh, what's affected. Um, by people being having impairments, so being like partially sighted or blind or partially deaf or completely deaf, but then taste surely can also be affected by stuff like that. Like people who smoke for their whole lives are affected by it. Even like people who take drugs, lots of like yeah. uh, drugs through their nose, <laughs> I get really affected by it. So I guess I don't know. What's the other one? Touch. Maybe touch is the only one that doesn't get affected by impairments. Well, I mean, if you lose a hand or something. But then that's like, that's almost like, that's not an impairment, is it? Because it's like not, it's not a um, dampening of something that you still have. It's like a complete savage, like, removal mm. of a limb. Well, but if there is some, if there is some nerve kind of. But as in like, so it's not it's not d dimmed or dampened or made like less successful your t your sense of taste. I mean, touch, it's gone completely because you can't physically touch. Well, if you just have some nerve injury and you can't feel so much anymore mm. in your hand, you can yeah. just feel that there's something, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. I think it's possible, I guess. Or even it's like the. I think, I think it's like what, like the, at the beginning I was always thinking like. What's the special speciality of each sense? Or what's like, mm. is this sense really special from others? And mm. by the end, I was just thinking it like not. Mm. Like all this, all sense of like similar. Do you think there's like, any reason why you have ended up, like why you care, you're so in tune with sound, but not so much with, for example, smell? Like, is there a way that you, we could trace it? Smell? why smell isn't like something that you're really in tune to without like I know, I guess unearthing me... your dark secrets <laughs> <laughs> no i guess for me it's just like that i've always been interested in music as and i think it kind of sound is just personal but i don't think it's like there's something special about sound that really intrigues me i guess it's just much more into music and like it's it's very boring apparently to be into visuals because like everyone certainly and our main perception every day life is mm. visual, so. So you chose to be into sound because it was less boring. <laughs> it's less boring and it's still omnipresent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas I mean, smelling, touching, it's like they are also omnipresent, but sound is like really. I mean, we perceive most most things visual and also sonically, but very rarely. Um, I mean, certainly we always feel something, but it's it's not necessarily needed for our spatial perception in mm. a certain way. I remember being like 10 years old yeah. and on, on car journeys, the questions we would always like, you ask your siblings or like friends was like, would you rather be really beautiful and really stupid or really ugly and really clever? And the other one was, would you rather be uh, deaf or blind? And in my family, because music is so important, they would always be like, blind, yeah. immediately. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, and you'd yeah, never yeah. be able to, like, I have a baby, you'd never be able to know what they look like, whatever. And any new, like, thing that you experience for the first time, you'll never know what it looks like. Mm. And they were like, how can you say that as a music lover, you want to walk around without being able to hear anything? And I was like, no, because I'd be able to remember sounds. And they're like, yeah, but you also can remember vision. Yeah. So but... now I don't know. And then I think about people like Stevie Wonder, and I'm like, hmm. I don't know. Someone told me a really funny thing the other day. There was like a comedian talking about Stevie Wonder and saying that, oh, it's Donald Glover and how they're friends and how he like knows the guy who's his art director 
and he's talking to him and saying how Stevie goes about picking the artwork for his albums and that apparently he has like a total instinct every single time and they it's not like brailed or whatever he's just like this one's right yeah like it's more orange yeah that's right yeah and yeah, his yeah. album artwork is insane it's amazing <laughs> but isn't it just amazing because he's blind yeah i mean we, we attach this kind of i don't think so i never thought that he would do his own album artwork so i, I never know. thought of it it wouldn't be less good yeah but if he wouldn't be blind and the artwork would be the same would it be also amazing yeah because i literally didn't know until yesterday that he or until like two <laughs> days ago that he okay. had an art director yes but then also i think like i don't know I remember when I first found out about Ray Charles. I found out that he was blind when I first ever found out that he existed. So I sometimes wonder whether maybe I like went through a phase of loving his music so much. I mean, he's an incredible pianist and great got a great voice, but like I maybe I liked it more because he was blind. And because I watched that movie where he's like, uh, if he meets a woman, he's like feeling her wrist, being like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is something something uh, worth fetishizing about. It's almost like romantic in a way. Yeah. Like that I that that idea of um that gets talked about so much of how your senses are heightened when you lose one of them. Mm -hmm. And I think people who are still have all of their senses are like it's like fetishized the idea that like suddenly you wouldn't be able to see anything, so you would just like smell your way around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I guess it's 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 really interesting. And when we look at I mean animals for example mm. that are less that have, have like their ability like dogs for example their ability to see is apparently not as good as their ability to smell something mm. so and then it's really like changing the way in that dogs are, are kind of used mm. in, a, in a certain way because you would use them to smell something but not use them to you know and then if you apparently couldn't see anymore it would also change the way what you're doing yeah and, that is, and what, what you can do apparently but like everything would change not only that one sense is getting stronger and you're still doing the same stuff every yeah. day but like that every day kind of life has changed i yeah. do this weird thing where if i wake up in the, in the night and i need to go for a pee or get some water i don't turn on any lights ever mm. and here it's quite light in this flat but at home like in london i can't see a thing And every single time, I tr yeah. I do it to train myself. And it's like, I don't know why I'm doing that, because I think one day I'm going to go blind, or because yeah. it's just fun to test. Like, if I'm I sharing a room with someone and they turn on the light to go to the loo, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, psychopath? Yeah, but <laughs> it, I guess it's just kind of because you know you can do it blindly. Mm -hmm. start. I, mean, I think I'm doing very similar. Like at night when you have to get up and just don't turn on anything it's just dark but you know where like the door yeah. is and you know where the light. But i love that though yeah i even sometimes will like here because it's so light in that room i'll close my eyes yeah and when i get out into the main room and walk to the loo with my eyes closed just like i can i know i can do yeah. this like i was thinking when i moved to Tallinn, how long it would take me to reach the state of i know where the light switch where the door handle is mm. and it just took like one week or something And I know everything as if I would have lived there like 10 years or so. Like mm. really But maybe it doesn't take that long. Maybe it doesn't take that long. No. Then also, you apparently, I mean, if your sense of smelling is uh, much, much stronger than... But do you think it's, it's, it's stronger or it's just like trained? Well, it's trained. It's just yeah. a matter of vocabulary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, you're, you're apparently also much more sensitive to things and... And I think it's it's changing much more than just like on the surface level your senses. It's like very much changing your character to some extent. Yeah, I was just thinking that that it like if you are someone who's very in tune with smell or thinks it's really important, are you perceiving like your relationships are different with people because yeah. it's dependent on something? And then there's there's the like tons and t it's not that many relationships you have in your life where you really know what someone smells like. Mm -hmm. So then when does it it doesn't matter a lot of the time. Yes. But is there a, is there an equivalent like if you're really in tune with sound, let's say you're really in tune with sound, I'm really in tune with smell. So I'm thinking about what people smell like, and then you're thinking about 
are you not thinking about what people sound like and thinking like I hate that person's voice <laughs> I can't stand to be around them well I do you do yeah but it's just something that since I have studied like sounds now it's just this this sense is like kind of activated now yeah like before I was just using like sound when I cross the road and I hear a car so I, that, that I go fast and I'm gonna die or yeah but now since I really engaged with it I'm like much more aware of it and like when I'm walking outside and I'm seeing like certain movements mm. also like for example in winter when someone was like snow sweeping I was like oh this must sound nice and then I was going there to just like record and yeah. listen to it and it's also like with voices certainly that I think oh this person has a nice voice or you have a nice accent or something yeah like so it's really like it's just there now and like yeah. I will always be kind of and I, I was thinking if I do four more theses about or three more theses about the other senses then I'm just like you have it all. <laughs> Getting mad. Mr. Something. Sense. Yeah. It's so interesting. Yeah, and then I also don't know, like the the kind of spectrum mm -hmm. and that we can hear is much richer and much bigger than the kind of spectrum and that we can see. So we can hear and distinguish more different tones than colors. Yeah. And, and I don't know how it is like with smelling or tests and like tasting. Yeah. How rich the sense naturally is. Mm. Yeah. And I also don't know how to make categories for that or how to but we like the stuff that we d studied in class was just about mm. uh mainly about like naming it was mainly vision and it was m about like how we denote things so how we name things and it was all lots of like, about like colors and what was really interesting is that like i got asked because i'm british how how do i perceive the color red because of the post boxes and the phone boxes and i was like red is bright bright red and then someone like a Russian guy or someone in the class was like, I perceive it as being a, like, and then we found the color in this like chart or whatever. Communist. Yeah. <laughs> but like darker. Um, and I don't know, it was just interesting. And then there was, there's another girl in the class who's American. So it's like, you, we think it's not so different, but she, she doesn't have that mm -hmm. like signifier. So apparently, yes. I mean, but like, there's so much red in my room. You said that the other day, there's so much red in yes. my room. So I wonder whether maybe that's what it is. What What is like your idea of red? I mean, is this tall? Yeah, red? like that. The, the color this? of this jacket, bright red. Yeah. But then, like that Tracy Emin poster, she's got the yeah. Union Jack, and I guess it's kind of that red in the middle. It's interesting. I mean, it has certainly a lot to do with the cultural sort of background, but hmm. Hmm, I, I guess things are not like rigid. I think they can like whatever it is, they can change hmm. in some way and. I said it's not related to the, what you said about red, but I was just thinking since we started recording mm. that if I like move on this chair, it makes like these sounds. This chair, what? or like the lever or something. Yeah. Like, and then you are like changing your position of seating, and I was thinking this will annoy us when we listen to the recording. <laughs> <laughs> kind of we should have just someone been. <laughs> yeah. Like at the, and I was starting to record. I was like just recording, and I was like breathing, and then I was like hear my breathing on the recording. Yeah. I was like, F man, it's like it's like so you get really conscious about yourself as a sort of producer of certain. But I think that's never truer than when you hear your own voice, and people. I I think I sound awful, but then I sing a lot, and I will get recorded singing, and I think I sound good often but, yeah so it's like i don't know that that's always fascinated me that i'll hear my voice on this and think you posh idiot you sound like such a like whiny high-pitched freak but then if i was re recording myself singing a song that i love that i can sing well i'd probably be like that sounds good mm -hmm. but is that because it's like an instrument maybe i don't know well your voice is an instrument mm. i don't wonder like what comes to your mind when it comes to tasting I I don't I think tasting is interesting because I love cooking so much and I think I didn't used to think about taste that much until I started cooking all the time. Yes. And especially like being vegan sounds like weird but I don't know I I often feel like I have to prove that I can cook really nice food. Mm -hmm. So it really matters to me and if I put something on a table that's going to feed people and someone reaches for the salt is fine but if someone like looks at me or is like hmm and I don't think that it's delicious I feel like awful <laughs> yeah that's interesting so it's... what is taste but taste outside of food is like well if you kiss someone yeah 
Are you thinking... This person is it, is tastes it, like this. Is it, is it no, a but... Of taste or a person of touch? I think kissing someone is a, a question of... A multi-sensory thing. Yeah, I think it's more about the touch, the physical, than the taste. But certainly if the kind of taste can be very disturbing mm. <laughs> or disrupting, mm. you think like, oh, I would like to continue kissing, but... What is this? Yeah. <laughs> but I do have it sometimes where I'll, like, maybe have the someone that I'm kissing for a long time and then I kiss another person and I'm like, ooh, and now I remember what the other person tastes like. Yes. So... But then I think people taste a bit like what they smell like because it's like your cologne and your own body smell mixed. Like, because mm-hmm. that's what you're smelling when you're by someone's neck yeah. and then you kiss them. Do you think you're building up some kind of inner databases? About that person? Yeah. yeah. Which then certainly influence the way how you act and interact with your surroundings again. Mm-hmm. Like the more different smells you have archived and the more sounds and the more, like, the more possibilities you have to reenact. Mm. And to remember as well. Yeah. I was just thinking like sometimes there are like, you probably know this, everyone knows this, when there's a certain, even a smell And you think, and you are very sensitive to the smell. And when you wonder, like, when you think about why you have to go back like 10 or 20 years in your life, like for me, there's a the certain uh, smell of, it's like detergent kind of. Mm. And I'm very sensitive to this because like my first girlfriend's staircase was smelling like this. And always when I'm smelling this, I'm like imagining me walking up the staircase. And, like, yeah, I have that exact same thing with, um, and I think someone once said this is why I went vegan, because my first ever boyfriend smelled like milk. <laughs> <laughs> just yes. like, almost like a baby does, it smelled like milk. And I never really thought about it. And then I remember once when I was like, after we broke up and I was like 17 or something, he said, uh, I, I met someone and I was like, this is the weirdest thing. He smelled just like <laughs> like milk. And then two years later, when I stopped eating dairy, my friend said maybe that was why. Because the smell of milk somehow was, like, all linked in, apart from, obviously, the environmental. Mm. This is another interesting thing. When, like, a person <laughs> smells like milk... Or when I've been in Iceland, the water from the tap tastes like egg. Really? Yes. I bet it's because of the sulfur. It's sulfur. Yeah. Kind of eggy. <laughs> yeah, know. sulfur's really eggy. But this is really confusing when, so- yeah. when something... When you expect something to be a certain way and then it's different yeah. mm. what about what's left touching I think it, I don't know touching is very important to me yeah but it's something you do very consciously in a way sometimes like when I smell something I have to breathe so I just I mean, but touching yeah touching isn't at, isn't a necessary at your, action at least with your hands I guess touching maybe like used to be more necessary in terms of like survival that you'd have to use like use all your senses to like whatever ward off bad things yeah but some i think for lots of people touching is probably the most like repressed and underdeveloped sense yeah whereas for me i think it's like i remember when i arrived here um someone said to me uh, what a teacher or something at talon uni said to me you should be careful about touching people in estonia because Like, you might be very touchy-feely, but they might get the wrong impression. And, and I, I mean, obviously that was about, like, touching, you know, a man or something and then getting the wrong attention that you didn't want. But, I don't know, it really stuck with me. Because I always, I touch people to make them feel comfortable. So if I sense that someone's feeling <laughs> so uncomfortable... May make Estonians feel uncomfortable. Yeah, but that was so strange to me. Because I, I do it, I know that I'm doing it, my friends will, like, could pick up on it. Do we have to stop? We never, I mean, <laughs> so the SD card is full. Um, yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah. But I, I think I did become conscious of it. Because mm-hmm. I, like, if, if I sense that someone's, like, doesn't know how to occupy a space, I'll just touch them a yes. little bit. Or, like, I think it's such a, I think it's a really um, powerful thing. It's a tool. Yeah. I think. De- definitely, definitely. It's it, absolutely. But You can change something so quickly with your touch. Yeah. And then, yeah, I guess in certain contexts, then, like, for example, if you flirting or you're liking someone, then mm. touching and vision seems pretty much connected. Goes together, yeah. But that's, what I, was, that's what I was going to say. Yes. You touch, but, and you sense things from touching, but it's tied in with your other senses. Mm. So, like, I would touch your arm, and the only thing that I could 
sense from my touch that I couldn't sense from my without my sight would be like if you had goosebumps yeah I could without looking at your arm I could I could feel that you had goosebumps yeah but then everything else like if you if I touched you and then you didn't like it and you flinched yeah I guess I would have to see that yeah and then how, how much do you think or if you make a noise like I guess in like a sexual sense if you touch someone and they make a noise then you know that the touch was a good thing. Yeah, this was the question, like how much are your senses influencing each other? So sometimes when you touch someone and, I mean, you see someone, apparently you have a certain idea of how it should feel when you touch this person, mm. then you touch it and it feels maybe much different. Mm. Then you see the person different as well. And then you have like different expectations when you touch this person again. Mm. Like there's kind of this interactive moment, but. I don't know. But like the thing about senses is apparently that everything is kind of when you think through it self explanatory. What I, do you mean? I, I think I kind of like it's something so inherent to us that when we just talk about it, a lot of things just get come up. Yes. 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 Yes.